How Inuit Build a Real Inuit Igloo in Two Hours Episode 1 A true Arctic survival masterpiece, indigenous engineering in the coldest place on Earth. Arctic tundra, blizzards, a finished igloo glowing from within by lamplight. In the vast, frozen expanse of the Arctic, where trees do not grow and temperatures fall to 40 degrees or lower, the Inuit developed an extraordinary form of shelter. A house made entirely of snow, the igloo. Built without nails, wood, or insulation. Completed in just two hours. Able to retain warmth in the coldest environments on Earth. This is more than architecture. It is knowledge passed from hand to hand, refined through centuries. A harmony between environment, science, and tradition. Inuit families migrating. Igloo clusters across frozen land. Hunters building temporary igloos. The word igloo means house in Inuktitut. And not all Inuit homes are made of snow. But the snow igloo, or snow house, was traditionally used by Inuit hunters on seasonal journeys. A portable, efficient shelter built on the land, with the land. Historically used across Canada, Greenland, and Alaska. Built for temporary stops during winter, hunts smaller igloos for solo travelers, larger multi-room igloos for families, even interconnected igloo villages existed during long hunts. The structure was perfected to protect from wind, insulate against bitter cold, and be recyclable by nature. Inuit cutting snow blocks, packing powdery snow, shaping firm snow drifts. Most think of snow as soft, fragile. But in the Arctic, snow is a powerful insulator and building material, if you understand how to use it. Not all snow works, igloo builders seek. Wind-packed snow from hard drifts layers formed by pressure, not fresh powder snow that's dense but not icy, allowing for clean cuts and structural strength. Snow contains up to 95% air, which traps body heat. And when shaped into a dome, the igloo becomes a natural thermal shelter, warmed by humans and oil lamps alone. Wide landscape, builder tests, snow layers with knife, clearing site. The first step is to find the right location. A slight rise or wind-protected flat surface is ideal. Builders test snow depth by stabbing down with a knife or snow saw. They seek homogeneous layers, the right density to shape blocks. Once chosen, the area is flattened, cleared of loose snow, and oriented so the entrance tunnel will face away from prevailing wind. This isn't random. The entire igloo is placed with respect for the elements. Built to survive nature, not resist it blindly. Inuit man slicing snow blocks, passing to partner, stacking methodically. The next stage is to harvest the snow bricks. Using a snow knife, traditionally made of bone or metal today, builders slice rectangular blocks about. 40 cm tall, 60 cm long, 20 cm thick. Each block is angled slightly inward, forming a gentle spiral curve when stacked. These aren't just bricks. Each one is shaped to support its neighbors, a compression structure based on arch physics. The same principle used in Roman aqueducts, now applied to snow. The first row is laid out in a circle. From there, the spiral begins. Time lapse of walls rising, spiral construction, builder inside fitting final block, the genius of the igloo is in the spiral dome. As the builder ascends, each block is tilted slightly inward. The dome forms a self-supporting arch. Snow is used to fill gaps in pack seam. This shape is not just beautiful. It is structurally efficient. The weight compresses downward and outward, locking the blocks in place. Inside, the air warms. Outside, wind slides over the curve, unable to grip. When finished, a keystone block seals the top. The entire dome can withstand blizzards and pressure from wind speeds up to 100 kmh. Tunnel dug below igloo base, vent hole added, sleeping platform shaped. The igloo's final touch is its entrance tunnel, dug below the floor level. Cold air sinks, so this design keeps warm air trapped inside, creates a thermal barrier blocks wind and drifting snow. Inside, a sleeping platform is carved above floor level, keeping sleepers warmer. A small vent hole is poked in the roof for air exchange avoiding CO2 buildup from humans and oil lamps. No chimney. No electricity. Yet the igloo stays 20-40 degrees warmer than the outside, even in 50 degrees conditions. Interior shots of glowing lamp, family sitting around cooking, frost forming on ceiling step inside the igloo, and the temperature shift is immediate. Outside, 40 bodings. Inside, close to zero LMDs or warmer. The walls shimmer as ice crystals reflect flame. Fur bedding cushions the sleeping platform. And though the air smells of snow and smoke, 
the feeling is one of comfort, not hardship. A single Kulik, the traditional seal oil lamp, warms and lights the space. The Inuit don't just build the igloo for shelter, they build it to live in, even laugh, eat, and dream beneath its snowy dome. Episode 2 to follow soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow for more cinematic travel inspiration.